So I first heard about the book Revolutionary Voices, a multicultural queer youth anthology from one of the greatest educators that I ever had the pleasure of being in their class, my high school choir director, Deb Vanneman. Um, I was part of a group of alumni who went back to surprise her on her 25th anniversary, and we sang a song at her concert. Um, and afterwards we went out to celebrate and she had mentioned that this book had been banned from my high school due to pornographic and sexual content. And I was really shocked to hear that a book had been banned from my high school where we had access to so much progressive material. So when I went home that night I did what any responsible young 20 something would do and I googled it. <laughs> And upon Googling, I was even more shocked to find out the book had also been banned from my former public library, the Burlington County Public Library. And I was kind of outraged by this. I think that the most telling article I found was, Library Pulls Queer Youth Anthology Leaves Joy of Sex, which <laughs> said to me that maybe this was not so much about sexual content, but homosexual content. And I was outraged, and my first response to this was I was going to write a very strongly worded letter. And then I thought that maybe I should read the book so I knew what I was talking about. So the thing about Revolutionary Voices is that it's currently out of print. So when I went to a local bookstore, I was not too shocked to find out that they didn't have it in stock. So I drove to another local bookstore who also didn't have it. And then I drove to a Barnes and Nobles and they didn't have it. So then I went to two local libraries and they didn't have it. And then I went to my university library five minutes down the road and they had it. <laughs> so I sat down in the library and I read the entire book in one sitting. And I was so moved by what I had read because it was such an honest look into the thoughts and lives of young kids who deserve to have their voices heard. So I knew that I needed to do more than just write a strongly worded letter. If I had as much difficulty as finding the book as I did, I could imagine that others in search of the book would be met with similar obstacles. And because nothing raises prices more than controversy, the book was being sold online for hundreds of dollars. So I wanted people to hear and experience the words of these brave authors. So shortly after college graduation, I sat surrounded by moving boxes on the furnitureless apartment floor of my friend Victoria Fear with our collaborator Katie McGee, and together we talked about what would become the beginnings of revolutionary readings, in which we would go anywhere and everywhere that we possibly could and just read from this book. In the beginning, we were just begging people to let us come perform this text. Our first performance was at Montclair's Cafe Eclectic, where we performed for coffee-sipping patrons, and nervous and unsure of exactly what we were doing, but we were led by this insatiable passion to have these voices heard. We kept pushing to get our story out there, and slowly but surely, not only were we able to perform in the places that we desired to, such as Blue Stockings Books, The Raconteer, and Watch on Booksellers, but we started to be invited places that I never thought that we would perform, such as Rutgers University, the National Library Association Conference, and to the Princeton Public Library. I had never even thought about having the performance of a library since we were protesting a library's ruling of a book. <laughs> but I soon discovered that the Burlington, public, the Burlington County Public Library's decision was not one that reflected the standards and practices of other libraries. In fact, it was far from it. Amazing libraries such as the Princeton Public Library firmly believe in allowing access to information and that one small group of people shouldn't dictate what all other people have access to. The month before we performed at the Princeton Public Library, we heard the tragic news of Tyler Clemente's suicide at just 18 years old. And as the weeks unfolded, we began hearing more and more names of young kids who had taken their lives because they felt that they could not live in a world being gay. Billy Lucas, 15, of Indiana. Cody J. Barker, 17, of Wisconsin. Seth Walsh, 13, of California. Asher Brown, 13, of Texas. Harrison Chase Brown, 15, of Colorado. Raymond Chase, 19, of Rhode Island. 
Felix Sacco, 17, of Massachusetts, Caleb Nold, 14, of Indiana, all in one month of each other. And so it was here in this room a little over two years ago that we had a moment of silence for these young kids who were gone long before their time, and I ask that we have a moment of silence now to remember them. As many times as I had read revolutionary voices and heard the text spoken out loud, I never realized just how many references to suicide that there were. They seemed almost casual in a way. But after these tragic events, I realized that these self-destructive thoughts went hand in hand with the idea that you were less than simply for being who you were and that your voice in this world didn't matter. And it was because of this that I wanted to fight harder than ever to make sure that these voices were heard. Although our original goal of restocking revolutionary voices in the libraries of my former high school and Billington County Public Library was unsuccessful, something more important happened. These words, these voices that lived so beautifully on paper were now heard louder than ever before. An attempt to silence them made them bellow. It's important to remember that closed doors are not dead ends, but an invitation. An invitation for you to break down the walls and create your own unique, beautiful, amazing, fabulous door. Because this book was banned, its message was taken to hundreds and hundreds of people who would have never even known it existed. Not only has my work with Revolutionary Voices enabled these words to be celebrated, it has also led me to develop a really wonderful relationship with the Princeton Public Library. Two summers ago, we launched the Page to Stage series in which we present stage readings of plays that have been adapted for literature. Princeton Public Library's commitment to not only providing access to information, but presenting that information in daring and accessible ways is why they are a leading force in imagining our future. I used to want to do theater because I liked the idea of being someone else because it was a world of lies that I could live in comfortably. But then I realized that really great theater, really great art is not about lies. It's about telling the truth and giving voice to others who deserve their truth to be heard. Theater is so much more than entertainment. It gives voice to those who need it most, and in a world filled with destruction, it creates. Tonight's event is about imagining the future. And we can imagine all we want, but then it's up to us to build it. More so than ever, the future is something that's in a state of uncertainty. But what is certain is that we cannot work towards building a future by silencing the voices of others. To build is to create, so no matter where we decide to go in life, please remember to create. And I'm very happy now that I get to present a few selections from Revolutionary Readings performed by the amazing David Skyce, Amanda Guzman, and Caitlin Overton. Um, and before they perform, I'm just going to read an introduction from Revolutionary Voices written by Amy Sunny and Margot Kelly Rodriguez. Revolutionary Voices has provided an alternative to self-abuse a chance to use art and writing as a means of self-healing, self-exploration, and resistance. The pieces as well demonstrate that art and writing are mediums for truth, rawness, and honesty. They are the sites where we are often most real and most vulnerable, in our journals, in our sketchbooks, and our dialogues with each other. These are the spaces where we overcome silence and self-doubt, where we sketch out representations of ourselves, and our reactions to the world around us. Revolutionary Voices is a call of action to all of you, to every individual who picks up this book, because this is truth, raw and real and in your face. It may be harsh, but that's what truth is. And these artists have taken the leap to write it down. In a huge act of faith, they put out into the world, not knowing whose hands it would end up in. It starts with us. So what are you waiting for? And that's some selections from Revolutionary Places. Thank you.